This is part 8 of AngularJS tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss filters in Angular. Filters in Angular can do three different things. They can format, sort and filter data. Filters can be used either with a binding expression or a directive. We'll look at an example of both. To apply a filter, use the pipe character. Here is the syntax. So we specify the binding expression, followed by that the pipe character. And then we specify the name of the filter, colon, and then any parameter value that we want to pass to that filter. We said that filters in Angular can do three different things, format, sort, and filter data. So here we have the list of inbuilt Angular filters that are available for formatting data. The first filter is the lowercase filter. As the name states, this filter formats all characters to lowercase. Uppercase filter formats all characters to uppercase. Number filter formats a number as text, includes comma as thousand separator, and the number of decimal places can also be specified. Currency filter formats a number as a currency. Dollar is the default currency. Custom currency and the number of decimal places can be specified. Date filter formats a date to a string based on the requested format. With date, there are several formats available in Angular. Here are a few of them. Four small letter Ys gives us a four digit year, for example, 1998. Two small letter Ys gives two digit year. For example, if we provide 1998, we only get two digits, that is the last two digits, 98. As far as the month is concerned, if we use four capital letter M's, we get the full month name. If we use three capital letter M's, we get the short month name. Two capital letter M's give us the month number. The month numbers from one to nine will have leading zeros. With a single capital letter M, again we get month numbers, but then the month numbers from 1 to 9 will not have leading zeros. And the same is true for day numbers. To get the day numbers, we can use either two small letter Ds or a single letter D. With two small letter Ds, we get day numbers from 1 to 31, but then the day numbers from 1 to 9 will have leading zeros. With a single letter D, day numbers from 1 to 9 will not have leading zeros. For the full date format documentation, visit this URL right here. I'll have this link available in the description of this video. There's another filter, limit to filter. This filter can be used to limit the number of rows or characters in a string. And here is the syntax for using this filter. So we specify either our binding expression or a directive, and then we use the pipe symbol, and then specify the name of the filter. This filter has got two parameters limit and begin. The first parameter limit is required, whereas begin is optional. Let's look at an example of using all these filters. So here's what we want to do. We want to display you know, list of employees here on our web page using a table. So we want to display name of the employee, date of birth, gender, and notice we are displaying salary twice. Within this column, we are applying the number filter. And within this column, we are applying the currency filter. And we also want to have this interface right here you know, on the top of the table, rows to display. And this is a number type text box, which means you can use this up and down arrows to increment or decrement uh, the number that is displayed within the text box. So at the moment, we have this value 3 displayed. So that's why we have three rows here. As I increase the number of rows within this text box, we want those many number of rows to be displayed within this text box. Let's see how to achieve this. So the first step here is to build this model, which I have already done. So here, we have our employees array. And notice every employee object has got name, date of birth, gender, and salary properties. And we have already attached that employees array to the scope object. Now, let's go to our view, which is this HTML page one dot HTML. So here, we want to present that data using a table. So I am going to use a table here. And this one is going to first have a T head section. So let's include a TR. And I'm going to include TH elements. And how many TH elements we need? We need one, two, three, four, and five TH elements. So let's make five copies of this. So first, we want to display the name of the employee. Let's display date of birth and gender salary twice. All 
All right, let's get rid of this last th there. And let's include a section for t body. And let's include a tr element. So we want to repeat a tr for every employee. So on this, I'm going to use ng-repeat directive. And what's the model? The model is employees. So within our ng-repeat directive, for each employee in our employees model, what do we want to do? We want to stamp out a TD. So let's include five TDs. So within the first TD, we want to display the name of the employee. So employee.name. Let's actually make a copy of this one so that we don't have to type the binding expression. All right. So first we want to display name, then date of birth. And then we want to display gender and salary twice. All right. So let's go ahead and view this page in the browser. So at the moment, we are not using any of the filters that we have discussed. And look at this. The data is not formatted properly here. So what I'm going to do is include this style sheet. So we've got some styles here. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this style sheet into the head section of our page. So let's reload this page. and. You know, the styles are applied now. First of all, look at the name. You know, the first letter is capital, but the other ones are small letters. Now, I want to capitalize all names of the employees. To do that, we can use the uppercase filter. So here, we have our binding expression. Following that, I'm going to use the pipe symbol. And then I'm going to use the uppercase filter. And as far as this gender is concerned, I want all of them to be in lowercase. So with gender. I'm going to use the lowercase filter. Okay, And look at the date. The date at the moment, it's displaying the entire date string. So we have the date part. And from here, we have the time part. Now, let's say I want just the date part. And that date part should be in DD, MM, and YYY. We want four um, digits in the year. So what I can specify here is use the date filter. So the name of the filter is date. And then we can we have to use the pipe to specify the filter. So pipe, and then the name of the filter is date. And then the format for date. Okay, So the value for the format is going to be dd forward slash mm. So I'm using two capital letter m's. So I'm going to get two digit day number. And then four small letter y. So we are going to get four digits in the year. So let's save these changes and reload this page. Look at that. You know, name is capitalized. Date of birth is in DDMMYYY format. And gender is all you know, small letters. Now, let's go ahead and apply number filter on the salary column. So the first salary column, we want to apply number filter. So I'm just going to include that in the bracket so we can see which filter is applied. And for the second salary column, let's apply the currency filter. All right, so we want to apply number filter. Now, before we refresh the page, look at the salary that is displayed. So if you look at the salaries, you know, we don't have any 1,000 separator here. OK, so all we are doing right now is simply applying the number filter on the salary column. So when we reload this, look at that, we get the 1,000 separator. Now, I also want to limit the number of decimal places maybe to just to two decimal. OK, so to do that, we can specify the value. So I use the colon symbol to specify the parameter value. And I want to limit it to two decimal places. Let's reload this page and look at that. We only have two decimal places. And that value is actually rounded now. 788 is now 79. Now let's look at the currency filter. So on this salary column, I want to use the currency filter. And look at this. When we reload this, we get the default currency symbol which is dollar. Now let's say I want to display this in great bit British pounds. So I can specify you know, the custom currency format, so which is going to be 
pound. And look at this. When we reload this, we get pound symbol as the currency format. And let's say, you know, I want to limit this to just one decimal place. We can do that again. So I'm going to use another colon here and use one decimal place. And when we reload, look at that, we get only one decimal place now. Okay, so we discussed lowercase, uppercase, date, number, and currency filters. Now let's discuss the limit to filter. So depending on the number of rows that we have in the text box, we only want to display those many number of rows. So the first thing to do is get that interface right there on the page. So just above the table, I'm going to include an input element of type number and I'm going to set this step attribute to 1. So what is this going to do? This is going to increment or decrement the value in the text box by 1 when you click on any of these arrows. Okay, So that's what step is going to do. And the minimum value is going to be 0 and maximum value is going to be 5. Okay, And I'm going to specify ng model directive on this and I'm going to call it row limit. Okay, the number of rows that we want to limit to. Okay, so let's include two HTML break elements and let's reload this page. So we should get that interface that we have seen on the UI and we want that little text as well, rows to display. Alright, so let's reload this page. Alright, so now look at this. For this number text box, we have specified the ng model as row limit. Now we don't have that you know, property on the model, so I'm going to attach that to the model. So let's go back to the controller, dollar scope, and let's copy the name here and paste that within our script file. So dollar scope dot row limit. Let's initialize that to a value of three. So when we first load the page, we only want to show three rows. That's the default value. And then the user will have the option to either increase or decrease that row limit. Okay. Now before we use this row limit variable, what I'm going to do is hard code that. So all these filters that we have used, we have used them in the binding expression. Remember, we have said that filters can be used either with a binding expression or with a directive. Now we have this ng repeat directive. I'm going to use this limit to filter with you know a directive. So we use the pipe character and the filter is limit to and it has got two parameters. The first parameter is the number of rows that we want to limit to. So I'm going to specify that as three. I have hard coded the value. So let's go ahead and reload this page. Look at that. Now we have only three rows displayed. But then it starts at the first row by default. The first row is Ben's row. So that's what we see right here. And then it shows three rows for us. Now let's say for some reason we want to display just two rows and we want to start, let's say, with Sarah's row, not with Ben's row. Now arrays are zero index based, so this is zero and this is one. So I'm going to say we want to begin at second row. Okay, so let's go ahead and reload this page. Now look at this, it starts at Mark's row. Why is that? You know, instead of starting at Sarah row, it starts at Mark's row. That's basically because arrays are zero index based, so zero, one, two. And we have specified that we want to begin at two. So if you want to start at Sarah row, you have to specify that value as one. So when we reload this, now it starts at the Sarah row. All right, now instead of hard coding the values like that, we want those values to be coming from the text box. Now, we have already specified the ng model directive on the text box and we also have you know that property added to our scope object so now we can use that property right here with the filter value so I'm going to use the same property instead of these hard-coded values so let's save the changes and when we reload the first thing that should happen is look at that Within the text box, we have the th value 3 displayed, and we only have 3 rows displayed in the table. And as I increase the value, look at that, 
dynamically the number of rows in the table are updated. And as I decrease, look at that. And then it doesn't go beyond below zero. Similarly, when we increment it, it doesn't go beyond five. That's because we have specified the min and max values for that text box. So what's happening when we change this value? Now, when we change this value, remember we have set the model ng model to row limit. So it's taking that value and updating the model automatically. Okay, so this property in the model is automatically updated as we change the value in the text box. And then since we are using that variable, you know, right here with this filter, it's automatically updating the rows that are displayed in the table. So that's the benefit of two-way binding in Angular, which we discussed in one of our previous video sessions. In our next videos, we will discuss sorting and filtering data using Angular filters. Thank you for listening and have a great day.